So thank you everyone for joining us today. My name is Megan Labor and I'm the Brand Marketing Director at Tappen. I'd love to welcome you to this virtual conversation featuring Marley Culver and Devine Southgate-Smith. Uh, we're honored to be hosting these two amazing artists with strong roots in their digital mediums uh, as this world of digital art uh, really expands. We thought it would be an amazing time to host a conversation between the two of them as they work in this medium in a unique light. Um, I will let them introduce themselves and then start the conversation. Hi everyone, I'm Marley Culver and I'm an abstract painting painter and digital artist. I'm based in LA and I've been with Tappan since 2016. Um, hello, my name is Devine Southgate-Smith. Um, I'm currently based in London and studying at the Royal Academy of Arts. Um, I am a cross-disciplinary artist working within video, um, text, um, digital render and sculpture. Um, and I have been at Tapan for, no, let's see, oh my God, since 2019. <laughs> awesome, okay, so. Um, I'm excited to talk to you, Devin, and our kind of, I think this will be a cool place to start. Um, you know, we both have our root in our digital practice and what is, um, I'll answer this first and then ask you, but like, what is our kind of upbringing and experience with technology, um, mm. you know, from our, from like early on to now. So for me, I grew up. I have very young parents and my mom's a graphic designer and my dad also has, you know, worked with computers, whether that's like IT or communications or, you know, software. Um, so we already always had a computer in the house and, you know, with my mom being a designer, she always had like stock photo, like uh, references or books. She had like uh, icon illustration, like webding books, which I like was obsessed with because of the symbols there, you know, the language there. And, um, you know, my mom also was going to school when I was young. So she was in art school and bringing home like projects and stuff, um, doing things on the computer, using us as models, stuff like that. So um, for me, like, having a computer around it really kind of opened up my world and um I you know socially or creatively so like I was using live journal <laughs> I don't know if you ever used live journal I don't even know what it is it's kind so of like pre-tumblr it's like pre-tumblr so it's like okay. you know like a blog um and then as well uh I used to like I still play a lot of video games and like I think that's a really interesting outlet creatively I think it's really interesting uh, artistic wise like the work put into it and then, like playing the sims like just uh things like that that kind of you know you're problem solving you're creating your own scenarios you're being creative with how you're decorating things stuff like that so um for me also like using photoshop and illustrator since I was young doing illustrations for fun and making like fake websites on photoshop <laughs> Like stuff like that so I think that's that, like, amazing yeah like those skills and just having fun with the computer like you know I wanted to be a designer since I was pretty young and I think my mom had influence on that but um yeah like just that tool and all of that has kind of led me into this like mix of uh kind of painting and digital work so I'm curious to see and hear if that's related to you at all or like what your experience was like um ooh, okay like i just i'm just like imagining you as a like a toddler on the computer <laughs> on i'm like have wow a photo of me like on the computer as like a four-year-old i'll send it to you later <laughs> that's so cool um yeah no i mean in terms of uh computers and um working digitally i think um i was kind of first introduced to that in secondary school um so maybe around the age of uh, oh my god, when did I start that? Um, 14, 14, 15. Um, um, and at the time I was doing product design, I was really obsessed. I really thought I was going That's to be cool. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so I, like I, I still kind of dabble into, into designing, but I th that's how I kind of learned how to use Fusion 360, which is the software that I still use still today. Um, and 
um, yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of got really interested in industrial design um, and I really like creating spaces and objects that I felt somehow, like I dreamt about things that I wanted to create. Um, and then eventually I think um, I started using this, these digital softwares or at least um, like as, as like this thing to just like, instead of like sitting and sketching, which I did a lot, <laughs> I um, would go to school and I would just make these little little objects. Um, and then eventually at university, I started using it more seriously um, and designing all my sculptures and large scale architectural installations with the software. Um, and then suddenly, um, after graduating I re from Central St. Martins, I realized that um, I can't make any of these things <laughs> anymore. Because, um, um, yeah, life as a young aspiring artist is quite hard. Um, so, um, so I just started dreaming. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to use this purely as something that I use to create um, spaces that I know I will never create. And I think that's kind of what moved me to using it now and and just using like really using it for not um starting um uh, starting to use it as a, something that is functional to then suddenly using it as something that is just like painting or um or sculpture which i have a background in as well mm -hmm. yeah oh my That's god to ask a question. <laughs> yes, um, you got this. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so kind of touching, um, kind of touching up on <clears throat> what I just said earlier about um, um, a background in painting and uh, sculpture. Um, um, it's quite interesting that we both also work with physical spaces. So we create things that are, um, that exist in the real world. Um, so I suppose what I wanted to ask is what are some of the reasons um, you also like to create in these tactile spaces or tactile environments? Because I saw that you have installations on like bigger mural kind of works yeah, as well. Yeah, mural work. So mm. I actually in high school, um, I did like a normal high school and then I went to an arts high school and for a year and a half I was doing theater production. So I was doing like scene painting um, oh, and wow. building sets and it was like very physical um, because <laughs> because I I applied to be in the visual arts program to be in painting and you know mixed media and stuff and like I never got my letter of acceptance there so I felt I felt very rejected <laughs> I was like fine I guess I'm just not meant to be an artist like whatever um yeah. so but that was really cool to kind of detour into that area because the relation between like theater production scene painting set building like you're creating an environment and there's so much so many ways that like is it was like for plays too so mm -hmm. um like the way that plays i love those as a concept and i know that you like reference plays in your work before yeah um like it just it's a very unique setting and it's like very it's like kind of in the same vein as movies kind of different it's like very similar more so to like uh performance art I mean, it is performance yeah. art, right? Um, so yeah, like just being in that world kind of like made me realize I like doing things that are really big and immersive and really like mm -hmm. you really exactly. get yourself into them. Yeah, so like doing mural work now that has been really satisfying because I just like things that are really loud and, and like engaging and just like swallow you anyways. And murals is kind of like my answer to doing more like physical work, more like performance or installation work. So um mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I've done painting and digital work side by side pretty much like the last 15-ish years or so. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, like I just like to keep that tied to the physical creation. And I also just always think about things like us as humans and like our primal beings, like being cavemen or whatever, like making sculptures, cave painting, like I just yeah. always want to have a tie back to that you know yeah as well as it's like going in the past and then moving forward into the future with digital work and like yeah exactly still keeping that in, in um i suppose making the reference to the prehistoric and the future kind of 
it, it, I don't know, it creates this contradiction that I think is very interesting. Like it's something that I like to deal with as well with archives and digital media. It's like, how do you yeah. bring those two references or those things, like how do you embody such a complex space? Yeah. You know? And I think that like, I also kind of see this in your work too, but I, I think 2001 Space Odyssey is such a good example of kind of like that weird, <laughs> connection in time, you know, yeah, across the aesthetics exactly. or whatever. So like when I'm looking at your work, um, it's sculptural, but it's digital. And like, there's something about it that feels very like call back to older times, but it feels extremely mm -hmm. new and totally yeah. foreign and, and like cool. So I, I don't know, I want to hear more about your like relation of digital and like real life, I guess. <laughs> So the, the relation, oh, the relationship between those two things. I mean, it's quite, yeah, I, I, I really, um, to be honest, like it's one of those things that I'm still kind of still mulling over. Um, Cause now I've, from being, I mean, I suppose when I was in Central St. Martin's, I was really, really focused on um, sculpture and performance and, and language. So um, I write a lot. Um, and a lot of my film work is based on my writing. Um, and um, yeah, like I think those two spaces have always followed me in, in, in some way. Um, and it's something that I kind of try to grapple. And I think the idea that you, um, what you were saying about um, um, the way that some of the works look quite, they have references to the past and then they look very futuristic at the same time. I think it's often because I, I research a lot and I and I um I have a lot of books, maybe a little bit too much. Um, <laughs> um <Never enough. laughs> enough, exactly. Um of references that um cross cultures, um, because a lot of my work is I mean, at least the fundamental um <clears throat> thing in my work is about my cultural background and um looking at structures and um if we start thinking about these structures as social or political things, there is a history that is attached to them. There's something that is embedded yeah. within the object. There's something that's, when you see a vase, like depending on what vase you're looking at, it tells you a story. You can follow its trajectory. Just like when you look at a shape and you see where its references come from. Um, mm -hmm. so, yeah. so for me, I think that's how I kind of look at um, this cross section between the digital and, um, the archive, because for me, yeah, it would um, the the um, the realness or the idea of realness is based within history for me. Um, yeah. And yeah, how to create spaces that kind of have this sort of like tension between those two things. Yeah. So trying to figure cool. it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, um. But then I think it's is it my turn or your turn? Oh my god, I just flexible. <laughs> I think we, we answered the physical space question. Um, huh? this one is kind of moving more into kind of something we discussed before, but what so words and language, um, mm. poetry, all these things are really prevalent in your like video work and other mm. mediums. Um, and we chatted about kind of music and our attachment to that and our relationship to that. I think that like as artists, um, like for me, I'm not musically inclined. It's just something that I really like have a lot of passion for. I love listening to music and I really appreciate it. Um, mm -hmm. What's your relationship to music and your work? And um, maybe if you want to talk more about like your language and in, in your work and text that you kind of, and anything you like to reference, like you have so much research that you do, like I'd love to hear more about how all these things kind of connect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, I feel like sometimes I feel like, you know, like there's um, crazy people in like, um, <laughs> okay, let's not say crazy people. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but you know, like those characters that get really obsessed with something and then they have those massive mood boards in the house with like yeah. images, and <laughs> Sometimes I feel a little bit like that because I feel like my practice is a little bit like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> like everything kind of um, has a connection um, and maybe it's within my own logic that 
I put them together. But um, so going back to your question. Um, <laughs> we can start with like music influences, I guess. <laughs> Influence. Yeah, so um, yeah, no, music is a very, very integral part of um, my everyday life as well as my practice. Um, I just, I, I, I think I couldn't live without it. Um, like I really, really just love music. And I, I, I don't know, it, I just feel like it's something that when you're working and especially as an artist, when you, um, you're you constantly focused on visuals, you're co constantly um, focused on a very specific form of aesthetics that just has something to do with you looking at or perceiving an image and creating a narrative from that image. And I think what is so beautiful about um, music is that you're kind of denied of that imagery and you kind of have to construct um, something else. Um, and you have to construct emotions, you have to construct um, memories, just from um, auditory um, influences, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're, when I, at least when I'm in the studio, um, it just, it helps me to kind of focus and helps me ch channel and tune into different um, ideologies, different um, moods and spaces. And I think they kind of trans, they kind of translate um, through my print as well. Um, in the sense that, I don't know, like, I think every print has a very specific vibe and it really depends on what music I'm listening to. Yeah. <laughs> like, you feel the sort of like, um, etherealness of the spaces. Um, and I think that's because I'm really in interested in performance and sound. Like I don't see them as static images. Um, totally. Like the place that I created them in are not static and therefore the image that you're seeing is, is forcing you in and is forcing you to kind of um, <laughs> take, a, take some sort of journey or some sort of, yeah. I don't know. I'm so nervous and I'm just blabbering now. So I'm going to stop. You're doing great. I blabber all the time. I think that's what makes us like very cool. Um, so I think um, I'm, that's why I'm excited about your work. Yeah, if you, let me just, um, I just want to say like, I, that's why when you came on to tap and I was so excited about your work because when I look at your prints and then learn that you did video as well, I'm just excited about the future for your work because I feel like you're gonna create these like experiences that are gonna be so like beautiful and like just really stick with you and I'm just really excited to see like where you keep going with your your work because like I feel like we work in very different mediums but like mm -hmm. I don't know it's just cool to see and it's like I really appreciate like talking to you about this stuff so yeah it's no, exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm super 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 excited to be talking to you as well because I think I think it's so strange, but um, in the process of putting this together, I just realized that we have a lot in common, <laughs> a lot in yeah. common, um, and not even just because we're both working in the same media, but I think the influences that we have um, are very similar. Um, yeah. And yeah, so I, I'm also very excited to um, to be here and speaking to you right now. Awesome. <laughs> All right, you're up. <laughs> So I need to ask you a question. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, just talking about um, influences, um, I really love the work of M Miro um, because, I mean, again, talking about language, but um, his like a lot of his work is influenced by language and poetry, um, especially his um, paintings. Um, and so I suppose what I wanted to ask is that I noticed that you use um, a lot of like motifs and shapes that um, often repeat in your work. Um, and therefore like, what roles do language and symbolism play in your work? Um, are you particularly interested in narratives or at least creating a narrative? Um, or are you just more interested in communicating with your, within yourself or with an audience abstractly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'd say both. I say that I started out with that abstract conversation like growing up and going to museums like I always love Miro too because I just love the the language like the the shapes and like the curves yeah. and like the colors and the contrast in his work um so I started off doing abstract because like I think that it was something that I was drawn to emotionally and visually mm. and then since 
I kind of threw myself into this pool of like working in abstract and then I've kind of been carving my way through it since then. Um, and that's where I've been like re using repeated shapes and um, across different meetings, mediums or different pieces and like recycling, I guess it's kind of like collage or like a stamp or like like the, the tool of language mm -hmm. and the repetition to kind of confirm what I'm doing and who I am in my work, you know, like, Is that me? I, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's very abstract to like explain, <laughs> but yeah, I think I might be finding a narrative. I might not, but mm -hmm. as long as that, as long as I'm communicating to people, like, you know, this is me. I'm hoping that you'll get a feeling out of it. Like I did when I was making it or like concepted mm -hmm. it. Like that's important to me. The emotional aspect's important. Um, I've never really been good at storytelling. I'm not good at like, you know, like I, I'm just really bad with words. So that's why I like abstract work because I think that you can still get a lot out of it without, it's kind of like music too, where you can listen to something and you make your own variation of it. You get your own meaning out of it and it changes every time you listen to it. So it's like, I'm hoping that that's kind of the same thing with my work is like, I, I'm starting to use these repeated shapes across things because I really love them. And like, I feel like I really love the shapes that I've created and they feel very true to me. Um, so like, I don't know, it's, I don't know, I'm still figuring it all out, but yeah, it's exciting. Like it's fun to do. Um, so yeah, creating a visual language is where I'm at right now. And if, if I can create a narrative out of that, that would be awesome, but I'm still trying to like I feel like a um archaeologist and I'm just like like dusting things off and like you yeah. know like kind of looking at them under a mic microscope right now so maybe I'll have yeah. an answer for you in a year or something <laughs> well I mean I think that there's also something quite interesting in um creating these abstract forms because I mean that's why I love Mivo because it's like though he was very obsessed with a specific ideology and what he wanted to say, regardless of it and whether you, you know it or not, you still get something from those purely because of the energy or whatever has transcended through the process of making it. And it's, mm -hmm. and in itself, it's a form of language because yeah. it communicates something. Yeah, that's why, it, yeah, it's like, yeah certain artists maybe have a certain sound, maybe they have certain ways that they construct their songs, certain instruments they're mm -hmm. always using. Like that's exactly. when I think about my work, it's kind of like in line with that. It's just a different, mm -hmm. it's just more visual. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you want yeah, me to so, ask you <laughs> or do you want to ask me a question? Yeah, I'm gonna ask you one. I'm trying to figure out, um, because I want you to be able to talk about anything that you're excited to talk about. Like, I was curious. We, like, briefly mentioned books before. And, like, you said that you're, you've been looking at, like, ceramic books and stuff. Is there anything that might not be super literal or, like, uh, lateral to your work that you're influenced by? That it's, like, you're influenced by it, even if it's not related to what you're doing? Yeah. I think, um, yeah, I think for sure um pottery <laughs> um music um which i mean right now i'm kind of like slowly mo like moving towards um c collaborating with more musicians and and working cool. on projects with musicians just so like yeah just to create that environment that i am in when i'm making the work then making people visualize it in 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 through in um in video format um um but yeah like in terms of like really um <laughs> absurd <laughs> things that influence my work I suppose um I'm just really interested in form um so I look a, a lot at archives mm -hmm. um and I'm always like I have I basically have loads of folders of like stealing archives from wherever I can find them um and then um I'm also very interested in um pottery I'm also very interested in fashion um and um furniture design uh <laughs> so I think it's really eclectic <laughs> no but, it's uh, great yeah but all of I think all of these things um kind of um encompass um 
me as a person and also my practice in general. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think you can see like Chris, so like in the background, I also love him. <laughs> Just <crazy>. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's nice to have all these different things because even if it's not the same thing as what you're doing, like it all influences it somehow, whether it's like your process or, you know, like the materials or, you know, whatever exactly. it is. So yeah. everything. Yeah, that's, within all of those different things, you get different, like, I mean, in terms of like product, uh, product design or like furniture design materials, the way that lighting like bounces off specific materials and people are using different renders and diff different yeah. ways digital art um so yeah I think it's like I think what's important in the world that we live in today is like to take references from everything that is around us because we just have too many we have a lot of things yeah. that include today <laughs> can I bounce that question back <laughs> totally yeah um well yeah music of course but like I I don't know I think like nature and plants has always been a big theme in my work just because I I don't know I just find the planet fascinating and the fact that like all these things have been created without our intervention or, I mean some things have been manipulated because of us but in general yeah. like these things exist on this planet and like like you look at certain <laughs> animals and they look like aliens like it's insane but like really exciting and like I, I love birds <laughs> um we have like a bird feeder on our porch that like a hummingbird will come by and like I don't know I just find oh that so inspiring and cool <laughs> oh, I love birds okay that uh, I can add um nature documentaries I'm yeah. obsessed with David. <laughs> colors of those birds of paradise oh my god like yeah. I would I would make a print in those like I mean I think I have <laughs> but, yeah, please yeah please share that if you do um <laughs> and I love baking like it's not something I do all the time but mm. I like the method of it I like the focus that's required it's the same thing with painting for my painting like because mm. I use a lot of really liquidy paint you know mm. when I'm applying it like it needs I like check on it all the time it's the same with baking where you have to kind of like keep an eye on what you're creating because if you're letting things rest or you can't let them go over a time or you can't do them under a time like you know it requires a certain kind of focus and attention yes, exactly. yeah exactly. and and yeah i mean it's also like it's also a creative outlet in some way mm -hmm. i cook and a like a delicious outlet <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah i love cooking like I, yeah, I think we, I live in a house that everyone cooks and wow. it's really important because we always have dinner together at the table and um, right now I'm like smelling cake. So as you're saying, as you're, as you're saying Can like, I come over? <laughs> my flatmate is baking right now, she's doing a, a pastry chef course. <laughs> so I'm like, wow. yeah, I have some That's cake cool. after this. <laughs> yeah, I guess smell is another thing, huh? That's like, I don't know it we're so used to it it's like just our senses we're just so used to like touching things we're so used to smelling things seeing things that sometimes we forget to really like look or study it and like exactly. smell has been something that I've been interested in lately because I'm working with um, one of my friends she has a brand she's working on and we've been uh she's been researching fragrances and then I have like a collaboration coming out sometime soon of a of a fragrance of a candle um oh. and like it's been really cool to get the samples for that. And like you get different samples and you have to test them all and like find the nuances and differences and the strengths of them and like how they sit on paper versus your skin, like stuff like that. Um, oh, wow. But I think for us, it's cool because like we go to school and we learn how to be critical and like pick apart things in detail and notice stuff. So um, yeah, just anything that requires a closer look, I find it's always fun for me. <laughs> no, for me as well. It's like, it's quite, it's, I think, yeah, I mean, you just touched on an interesting point because, yeah, I mean, all of our educational life, at least within art, is like to study things and to really just deconstruct them and break them down. And I think, yeah, like just, 
I think it makes you kind of aware of the environment that you um, you live in again and yeah and like stimulus is that you should focus on or things that you should also like kind of right. push I think a lot of people have been noticing that too over the pandemic of being I mean not everyone but like a lot of people have been home more often and like yeah. you just notice a lot more when you're in the same space all the time yeah. <laughs> exactly so, yeah you yeah, know my house has changed like i don't know how many times during <laughs> during this quarantine <laughs> like moving things like yeah a lot <laughs> um so you have a question about us and how we collaborate so mm. if you want to ask that i feel like that would be a cool one to touch on yeah no of course um so i suppose um yeah i think like um we're both artists who uh, essentially work um, collaboratively with designers or brands, as you were mentioning, with the perfume. Um, so I wanted to sort of get your thoughts on um, like this way of making work, you know, like work that is commissioned. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially the question is, um, what, effect, <laughs> what effect or impact um, do commissions have on your work? Um, do you think it has something to do with the more multifaceted nature of your practice, uh, being that you work in both tactile and digital mediums? Yeah. Um, well, I feel really lucky to work on the projects that I do because I feel like people come to me because they want to work with me for my style and similar work that I've done before. And a lot of it, is like physical product which is really cool mm. and you know I feel very honored especially through tap in like when we get really cool projects like I'm working on a project right now like that yeah. is creating you know something kind of large and physical um yeah and very loud and <laughs> I find that I just am lucky to like have that uh opportunity to like make things that are very big and and, and obnoxious and like colorful you know um but yeah i i wouldn't say that i feel very lucky that i haven't had too many projects maybe not at all that have been stifling you know like i don't feel like i get things often that are like can you do this but like tone it down you know so um yeah. it's been really yeah. nice to have expression and and people embracing that um, yeah but yeah I'm excited to, to work more we'll see what this year brings because last year was a little tricky with like stuff and things being canceled or not going through and like but I've already gotten some very interesting um asks like I I did a com I did a proposal for a cruise ship dining room <laughs> like mural <laughs> wow so random but like really cool That's you random. know that's yeah, very I, <laughs> yeah it was really cool it, I I didn't get it but like it was still interesting to realize you know like oh there's other things out there that you probably haven't thought of doing before that exists okay. so um yeah how about you um oh uh, for me um I never really I never really thought about um uh commissions or, or collaboration with with brands as um a thing until i graduated um and since i uh, graduated in 2017 i um well graduated from my ba now i'm in my yeah. ma but um i've been having i've been approached by different brands um to do commissioned work and i was like i didn't even know this was a thing <laughs> like i just thought it was I know, like oh yeah it was just done within the brands like i i was really not like i just did not know about this um and um but it was really amazing because like I, I suppose the first one that I did when I finished university was with Hermes the fashion brand yeah. and it was really amazing because <laughs> I was I was just like that's okay. a big one yeah no 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 yeah I was I was quite like wow um but, <laughs> but also like what they required was um something that was really interesting because I made a very big like seven meter tall structure for my um, degree show. And they saw it and it's very conceptual. There was a performance and everything. And they were like, okay, so we want um, an installation, a walkthrough um, with the Hermes colors. And I was like, at first uh, I was just thinking, how, 
You're like black like, and orange. Yes. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I think that this would work. Um, but um, it was great because I could basically just dream again and create, um, essentially I created a playground with um, yeah. an collaborative that I had at the time. And we created this massive playground, um, beautiful colors and um, all of these kind of things. So I think um, even if, I think every single collaboration after that has been really exciting because it just pushes me um, to take one step further. Like they're not things that I do within my practice, but there's things yeah. that one day I would love to be able to do within my practice. You'll never have that budget to be able to create something that um, is like the caliber that you would like it to be. Um, yeah. so I think it's really important to work with brands and it's um, important to also have um, different types of artists having dialogues within spaces that people would not otherwise um, um, see art, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so currently yeah. I have on at Brown's fashion. So if something yeah. was <laughs> Yeah, sorry, where is it? Is it like in their store right now or? Yeah, it's in their store in London, um, but it's also available online. So if you want to see the film, it's available online. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, that's another thing too, like, and that Hermes project sounds like a perfect example of people who recognize something within you that's different and like very unique and, mm -hmm. They're giving you the space to like be your own person and create the work that you want to. And like, mm -hmm. I just feel so lucky to ever be involved in things like that because I don't know, it's like people are strangers, you know? And like the fact that they find you and they're like, we love your work and we want to work with you. You're like, oh my God, thank you. Like, that's cool. You know, like it's really encouraging. And um, also the global connection I think is always really cool. Like the world is, big and it's small at the same time and being able to create things that touch a very specific or unique audience like it's really awesome so exactly yeah. exactly cool cool cool, cool. I I, guess, is it, is it let's see okay we did your brand question or collaboration questions so for me um yeah like I guess influences or was there a moment in time in your career or like growing up or anything that led you to where you are now like was there kind of like a light bulb moment or something really significant that you experienced that encouraged you and inspired you to kind of keep going forward on your path mm. whoa we're getting personal <laughs> <laughs> <That'd be good>. um. <laughs> Um, to be honest, like, I think I've had, like, a few. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I suppose one, I suppose one um, anecdote that I think is quite funny, um, well, not funny, but something that it always comes back to me um, is the fact that I didn't actually want to, I mean, I never really thought about art when I was younger. So I was doing product design. Um, I wanted to be a dancer. So I was um, doing contemporary dance Whoa. and I, I, I would have um, probably um, continued dance. Yeah, but, that's uh, something we didn't really talk about too. And like dance is another thing that I just find incredible. Like I'm obsessed with it. I don't know, do you like jungle? Yes, I do. They, the like, they, they're like, yeah, the band, like their music videos are incredible. Like I just like, I'm like, what do I have to do to like get in that world of work because like it's just fascinating and like I just feel so much when I watch them so yeah 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 no 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 I think yeah no I think dance is uh, really important I still dance and I love dancing any excuse cool. to dance I'm, I'm there um <laughs> but um yeah so uh yeah so I I kind of wanted to be a dancer at the, uh, when I was in school and I was really I was a really bad art student like I used to I used to just like draw in my sketchbook um, and draw things for other friends. Like I was really good at making tags, you know, like. Yeah. <laughs> things, you know, like I was like making tags for the cool boys. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I was doing this kind of That's stuff. That's awesome. I can't believe it. Um, and um, 
yeah, and um, I would draw people and all of this kind of stuff. But I would never do my art homework because I was always doing English and um, the other subjects and dance and mm-hmm. everything else. Um, and one day I got a detention um, for not doing my, my art homework. And um, essentially, um, um, one of like the toughest and scariest art teachers walks in and she's the head of the, uh, the department. And she was like, looking at the drawing that I was making. So I was doing my homework. And she called me in for the next day. Like, can you come back after school? And I was like, oh, what did I do? Like, did I not draw that? <laughs> like, I, was, I was really like, I was really scared. And she just like put a, um, um, a canvas in front of me with oil uh, paint. And she was like, okay, so I would like you to draw this subject. And I was like, oh, to paint this subject. And I've never painted wow. before. <laughs> And, and oil uh, is not like an easy thing to just pick up oil, and like start doing. She didn't me anything. So I was just like doing a really bad job at it. Like I was, I'm very good at drawing. So I can draw, um, I can draw portraits. So I can draw you like looking yeah. like you, um, but I could not paint. <laughs> I'm the opposite. Well, I feel like, I feel like I'm more comfortable painting than drawing. Like yeah. I have like a painting of a person in my studio and it like looks very off. <laughs> But yeah, so then ever since, like, I just wanted to perfect that painting. And um, ever since I've been doing art and I'm still friends with this, with my art teacher. Because <laughs> so she was cool. me to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I remember um, I got into detention one time for like drawing on my desk. And, and this is like at my normal high school. So it's like, you know, very American high school, um, like boring. But yeah, I got in trouble for drawing on my desk one time. And then like at my... And when I went to college, my I had a professor be like, your technique is like, you know, what you, your process is very idiosyncratic. And I was like, is that a compliment or like what, you know? Um, but I love that even in art, you know, there's like still like structures or whatever things that, especially in school specifically, I guess that you have to follow, which is like very funny and like backwards to me because I feel like going to art school should be like, totally exploratory and open and yeah the fact yeah. that you were like I don't I'm not doing this <laughs> like I love that you know yeah no yeah no exactly but then yeah and then I don't know it just stayed it, it, and I love it I mean I also chose art because I felt that I could um I always knew that because I I, I am I'm cross-disciplinary but I'm also like multi um faceted so I, I am multi-talented let's say Oh my yeah. God, can you say that about yourself? But um, <laughs> I chose art because at, when I was young, I, I I felt like I couldn't choose what I wanted to do. And yeah. I felt like art was the best way because I could do everything. And right now I'm right. working to almost everything <laughs> that yeah, I want. To. Very vast. Yeah, I feel yeah. like it's this kind of like thing that you can expand outward in any direction and it still fits within the world of art. Like, you know, when we do yeah. these like, brand collaborations or things for ourselves or things that might be more like about a research and a story or something it all fits together and um that was the same thing for me like being able to go to an arts high school and college like a liberal arts college you get to try so many things like welding and sculpture ceramics digital photography darkroom photography um screen printing like all these things um and I just think like that's the best way to do it because then you really figure out what you really like doing and what you're drawn to and like I can I can look back at sketchbooks from high school and see some like some slight lines of like there and now you know what I'm doing like but yeah that's really cool sorry what no I was saying that you can trace you can trace these things in your yeah career and in your history yeah I think also that's why like it's funny looking at my abstract artwork from like (laughs) high school and college like for some reason I was like obsessed with the idea of like menstruation and like the pain of being a woman when I was like teenager because of course that's a very dramatic thing to be obsessed with when you're like 16 you know um but it's funny seeing like how I abstracted those concepts in my art at the time and like you know, how, how would I do that now? You know, it's just like very funny to think about how you're thinking and seeing things changes over time as well. And like what stays similar. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
Um, all right, I think, do you want to do one? We can do one more question each or what do you think? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, let's do one more question each. Is it my, oh my God, I know, I know. Yeah, I your turn. <laughs> Please turn, is it? Um, You're good. <laughs> Okay, so mm, I'm not sure which one to ask. Um, maybe let's ask a short one um, because I think we love to talk. <laughs> um, it's nice. It's actually sorry. really nice. I haven't had this kind of like conversation with another artist in a very long time, it feels like, you know. Okay, so that's <laughs> why I'm like, we're lacking that connection. Uh, Exactly. Um, okay, so mm, mm, mm. I think I'll ask the one about, um, but I think we already touched on that, like in terms of like what type of environmental specific elements do you consider to be essential, to be an essential part of your studio vibes? Mm -hmm. um, we kind yeah. of touched on that, but I think, do you want to go a little bit deeper in there? Yeah, I'm still figuring that part out I I've bounced between like making work in my living space I've done mm. that for most of my career so far and then I had a shared studio space which was cool and now I'm back at having like a dedicated room in our like rental to working and painting and like I have like windows on all sides pretty much right now and for me I just like need to have space because I work on the ground um that's just comfortable for me and I'm also not an oil painter so it's not like I can rely on my medium to take care of itself while it's vertical you know so I have to make everything on the ground because I use so much liquid and wetness in my work that it needs to be like leveled um yeah so yeah just having room and then having like certain objects around like I'm still working on my space at the moment um trying to bring in like interesting furniture wherever I can but um for me I usually always have headphones on just because until one day when I can have like a standalone studio that's like soundproof <laughs> I don't want to like annoy anybody you know <laughs> like wouldn't that be the dream you're just like singing and screaming along to anything you want while you're working like that would be the dream <laughs> so yeah um yeah I don't know my my studio is still work in progress but just as long as I have a space um, to work and that's my own that's that yeah. helps so much yeah yeah no exactly do you have a separate studio space uh yes yes so at the royal academy um we i have a studio there and then i kind of have like a compute like my house is also a studio studio it's more like computer work um yeah. and so like when i do the renders or when i'm working on um, film like sometimes I, I work from home um, I live with other artists so it's quite useful yeah and then yeah and then I have my studio at this uh, Royal Academy which I have not been at um, much recently but COVID and yeah. um, and I've just found it more comfortable just working from home um, but now that things are opening up I'm quite looking forward to just getting back into the studios and getting my music having my books around um and yeah i, I need yeah for me I, elements that i need are essentially some nice objects that inspire me and then mm -hmm. books and music like speakers yeah totally yeah. um so i guess we have like 10 minutes left but i don't know is there any kind of other subject or something that you want you want to touch on like i know that this conversation is about like digital. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything there that you wanted to talk more about or anything else? Like I, my other questions I had um, were about, you know, the influence of like spoken word and text in your mm -hmm. video work, or mm -hmm. we can talk more about like maybe changes that we're taking forward with us because of the pandemic or yeah. you know like anything like that does that anything yeah. stick out to you um well i suppose it's um direct if we if we kind of move it um towards um yeah like take it um personal 
towards something more um, personal and something that everyone can relate to. And then we end on a nice note. So yeah, maybe yeah. the one about the pandemic. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess these things are kind of related. It's like, how are we moving forward? And like, how has the past year affected us? I think for me, like I'm looking at my work holistically and like trying to create a stronger presentation of all of my work, even just sketches and client like conversation, just really making sure that my work has an impact in a space to live in. And like, I think yeah. that's why digital and all the stuff is so cool. Like how Tappan has been really innovative and creative with how they're displaying digital work, like in these mm -hmm. like rendered spaces. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know anything about 3D. I don't know anything about, you know, anything that's more kind of like technical digitally. Yeah. So for me, it's like, what can I do to, display my work in a way that exists in a space, kind of like the spaces that you create, um, you know, your architectural kind of rendered spaces. Like what what can I do to evolve my work in a, in a new and different direction? And um, yeah, so that's what I'm kind of thinking about. Um, I'd say that it's been really hard to stay uh, inspired all the time I felt way more burnout over the past year than I normally would um yeah. but I am really happy and grateful that we have space here in our home like we have a garage that's a workspace that my mm -hmm. fiance has built as a wood shop so he's been building me frames so it's becoming this much more personal process and very involved from start to finish of like creating paintings yeah. now which is really cool I didn't have that before so you know having the space to do that it's been really cool um so yeah i don't know it's been a year <laughs> yeah it's been it's it's been a year yeah no i think for me um this quarantine kind of allowed me to really think about um the cross sections between my work um because before it i was just like bulldozing through like maybe three different practices yeah. <laughs> uh, um having that time to stop kind of made me think okay to find a way to bring these these elements together and I think um yeah like creating an environment for myself that I know that <clears throat> I'm living with people that I'm I'm happy to be living with and um like they love the fact that I work from home and it's I don't know I've, I've just been feeling um quite blessed to be in this environment regardless of yeah. whether it's very very difficult um, um at the beginning of the quarantine is, was yeah. very intense. um but I don't know like I feel like I've kind of found a way to structure everything to work it for me you know like to make things a lot easier and to look after my self and um yeah <laughs> like have a balance you know like work yeah play, work play and I have and I think just like journal I don't know how you keep track of your life but I have like a, a bullet journal that I update you know weekly and daily it has things on there that's been kind of my thing to ground me every yeah. day <laughs> no for me, yeah for me it's like um um I have a sketchbook <laughs> and I'm always like writing um things in there or I um try to organize everything through this notepad, digital notepad. Um, and right now I have like my first intern. <laughs> so it's quite nice so um, cool. to be working with someone as well that is um, um, like, it, it kind of helps you feel like you're not working at home alone. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think like for me, it's just been really important to focus on how to make working as an artist more um, sustainable. And um, yeah, and I think it's, yeah, I just think it's really important. Yeah, I think we're all listening to ourselves a, a bit more. Like we're, mm -hmm. we're hearing ourselves now, like over the past year, I know that I am and like, I'm really like 
trusting myself and my gut and you know it's like I want to paint more and I want to have days where I just wake up and paint and that's all I do I don't even look at my computer like that's my dream you know so um it's like I know that I know the things that I want now and that make me happy and I've learned that and it's just been through introspection and a lot of time in the same space like trying to explore different parts of my brain you know this whole time so um yeah it's gonna be strange like seeing how the next year unfolds with life and where our work goes and leads us. I think that for me, like trying to, to create more concrete references and, and artist statements and stuff for my work, that's something else I've been like studying and working on. So um, I also have a ton of reference books that I just, I don't always sit down and look at them. And that's something that I want to incorporate into my practice, like being a day of just looking at references, you know, yeah. drink some tea, look at books listen to music and relax, you know, and that yeah. will help. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, that's what I've been trying to do as well. I think it's, yeah, I just think it's important to keep our creative selves and our energies um, in a, like, in a nice zone, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's easy, it's too easy to, like, look at our work as ourselves, and just focus yeah. on that. You don't really think about yourself as a person sometimes when you're an artist, you're like, just, exactly. you're focusing on the work, you know, so. Exactly, yeah. Like, to, exactly, to create that space between the work and yourself. <laughs> wow. Oh, this is kind of amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm really, I mean, um, saying it again, I'm really happy to have had this conversation um and um and i'm super um pleased that we have been joined by people that i can't see yeah um <laughs> it's yeah, kind of been really cool we've just been talking to each other but um i really hope that um the people listening have enjoyed listening to us um <laughs> something <laughs> yeah thank you everyone for joining so much um so nice to talk to you, Devine. I hope that we can meet up sometime in London or LA or whenever that happens. That would um, be so cool. maybe go to like a music festival or you know art show or something and like have some experience together. You know, I think that would be really cool. I'm really looking forward to having connection with people again. As introverted as I am, we need <laughs> it. We all need it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, no, no. Let's let's do it. Let's do it. I'm super happy with the conversation that we've had and like the conversations before and yeah, mm -hmm. a good energy here. <laughs> cool. Amazing.